Next up, last two, Texas Tech. The Red Raiders, no more Cliff Kingsbury. We see this so different, I think. It's entirely possible. Because you have picked them to win a lot of games that I just don't think they're going to be able to do. Okay, I can understand that. Uh, I, they were very close in a lot of games last year. I think the defense is continuing to improve. Uh, Texas Tech went 5-7 and seven last year, 3-6 and six in the conference. They got six returning starters on offense, five on defense. Number 24 most experienced, te- experienced team in the conference. I can't talk for nothing today. That's okay. I've missed it. Good Like gracious. nine words so far already. The over-under is six, and it is minus 110 on both sides. So Vegas kind of sees this right on it, right? New head coach Matt Wells, 44-34 and 34 in six years at Utah State. He steps into a pretty talented roster that was close to breaking through under Kingsbury. New offensive coordinator David Yost, he's going to run his version of the air raid, right? It's uh, the same thing. I mean, Utah State led the country in scoring last year. So, and what he's got with sophomore quarterback Alan Bowman, uh, he can lean on that. They've got four out of five offensive linemen back. Their skill experience is through the roof. New defensive coordinator Keith Patterson, he's got to revamp the defense, but his game plan allows for like ball hawking opportunities. And I mean, this much, like it, with what he had at Utah State, he had 32 turnovers, 22 interceptions at Utah State last year. I mean, that led the country. That was, and, and they're going to be able to do a lot of the same stuff at Texas Tech, right? Because they're going to have to take more risks. So, uh, Lord, uh, linebacker uh, Jordan Brooks and Rico Jeffers, they combined for 144 tackles last year. They need to lead this defense. The defense has to improve in order to have a winning season. I think they will. I think Matt Wells is an incredible coach. Uh, I've got him at seven and five. I've wow. got him over the six wins that Vegas has it set at. This has to be the biggest chasm that we have between picks. Okay, I mean we can. I've got him four and five in conference. I've got him winning at Arizona. I've got him beating Utah, beating uh, Montana State, loss at Oklahoma, a win over Oklahoma State, a loss at Baylor. I've got him beating Iowa State. I've got him winning at Kansas, but then I've got a loss at West Virginia, a loss to TCU, a win against Kansas State, and then a loss against Texas. So early in the season, I've got them sitting at six and two before they go to West Virginia, and I think that that's the, I think that's the big game that Neil Brown gets, because at six and two, everybody looks at Texas Tech as oh Matt Wells has got it rolling like this is, but I think that Neil Brown is one of those. So at the way I view the schedule is a little crazy. I think Texas Tech was this close to being really good under Cliff Kingsbury. And I think that this coaching staff can take them to that next level. So this is a philosophy problem that I have with the team. Okay. okay. I, I'm i good with head coaches doing really well at lower tier programs and getting promoted up into the Power Five. I always appreciate that. And I think a lot of them can do really, really well. Here's what doesn't have any track record of success. When you take your entire staff from that small school and you bring them to the big school, listen, there's a reason that your entire staff, if your offensive coordinator was good enough to be in the Big 12, he would have already been there. If your defensive coordinator was big enough to be there, they would have already been there. I I think this is a problem. Arkansas had this problem. They hired uh, Morris. SMU, he I brought think, he brought his entire staff. Yeah, but that's they a little all different. Looked, I, why? Why you just you because think they, you're looking at those individuals and you're saying they're different? But at the end of the day, the philosophy stays the same. And Arkansas is not the only example throughout history. But it just doesn't usually work out early when you take a staff at a lower tier school and you bring them the entire group over to a big tier school and you say compete with all these guys head coaches leave all the time and then they get new coordinators that are more qualified than their previous coordinators yeah, but, but, uh, and when they anybody, build a program who was he going to get to go to lubbock well there's a bunch of people in it that that i think would take that job i don't i, I don't think, know them I, by name i think his staff at utah state was was pretty good i'm not knocking um, them i don't think that they're not good at utah state <laughs> I just think history. I think history. I have them. I have them four and eight. I think history shows us that this is not going to work well. Four and eight. Okay. I mean, you you could be right. 
I, you could feasibly be and right. And like I said, it's strictly a philosophy thing on it just doesn't bode well when small Herman didn't take his guys from from Houston to Texas. I, like, did. I mean, like, he took Todd Orlando. But but Major Applewhite, his offensive coordinator, actually got the job at he, Houston. W- there's nobody in the world that thinks that Major Applewhite would have been an offensive coordinator at Texas, right? I mean, he he was at one point. He was the offensive coordinator at Alabama under Saban in his first year. <laughs> Applewhite got promoted way too early on a That's lot right. of things, right. and he just and, and kinda, we realized and we realized. Yeah, that's he, not what he, he doesn't need to be a power power five coach. Yeah, I agree. Like, this is a, like there's just a step up in class that's harder to reach. Yeah, that's that's all. It's strictly it's not a knock on those guys. It's just a philosophy because I don't know anything about them. I know what they did at Utah State, but I can't take that and translate it to what they're going to do at the Big Twelve. What quarterbacks are they playing now that they weren't playing then that were turning the balls over to that great defense? I mean, you might be right. The quarterback play here and the offensive scheming in this conference is going to be way better than anything that they've ever seen. Hey, you're you're right. You're right. I, it's just it's like I said. It's strictly a philosophy. In I I'm not. If I hired, if my team are a team that I liked, I, I love Neil Brown. I'm so glad that Neil Brown got the West Virginia job. We're probably going long. I'm going on rants. But I don't think it would have been smart for Neil Brown to pack his entire staff from Alabama and take them to West Virginia because I don't think they would succeed there. You might be right. But I think Neil Brown is a leader of men, and he's an offensive genius, and he's a really good coach, and he can hire other coordinators that are more qualified than the people that were behind him. Uh, It's just just that philosophy. Okay. Okay. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. we're, We're pretty far off. Um. Yeah, we're pretty far off. So I, I've got them seven and five. You've got them four and eight. Get them four and eight. Now, 